We, we want to use this space as long as we can to share the excitement we feel at the discoveries that the Lord has allowed us to find in the Bible. We're not trying to come up with sensational ways to read the Bible. We just want Christians to get excited about the Word of God again because it's like the Lord of the Rings on steroids. The Bible is spectacular when you dig into it and when you realize what's been covered up over the years by translators with a naturalistic bias. I don't think they were deliberately trying to deceive us. I just think that, well, we all know that there's only one God, and so these references to the other gods of the pagans around ancient Israel were just their imaginary friends. Nothing to see here. Move along. And so they would translate the names of, for example, the names of deities that were known to the Israelites as things like plague or pestilence. It's like, no, that's Dever or, or Reshef, who was known to the Greeks and Romans as Apollo. But you're translating it as plague because, well, you know, everybody knows he's not real. Well, yeah, but the early church fathers thought he was real. The apostles thought he was real. Hebrew prophets thought he was real. References to chief deities of the pagan pantheons around them. This is much more than just God favored this people and he just indiscriminately killed everybody else. You realize that there's actually a war going on. And at the people who were, I mean, they were welcome to come over to Israel's side. I mean, there's there's Moabite and Canaanite blood in Jesus' bloodline. But most of these people refused and it, because they were sold out to these other gods. The overlap between what we were taught in school as Greek mythology or Roman mythology or Egyptian mythology and the Bible, it's like jaw-dropping. And secular scholars have seen this, I mean, for going on 25 years now. 